Today on Judge Faith, these two ex-lovers met in church. He's like, why don't we just go up to Vegas? But when money changes hands and the relationship ends. So about how many women have you dated in the church? What will the minister say? Under oath. Minister, I was waiting for the answer to my question. They need to be worried about trying to save us instead of trying to date us. Were you dating other women in the church? Not while I was dating her, no. That's not true. He was dating me and the young lady at the same time from the Bible study that I was hosting that he was at. Well, what's wrong with meeting people at church? Well, come on, you're a minister. You're not supposed to be dating every single woman in the church and giving them the eye. That's not true, Your Honor. Your Honor, he is a holy hustler. He's like, why don't we just go up to Vegas? He told the other girl that he wanted to go up to Vegas. I remind you that you're a minister, sir, and you're in a court of law, so that's a double whammy for you. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Donald Revels says he loaned money to the defendant for a new apartment. He's suing for the unpaid loan. Defendant Sherelle Clausel says the plaintiff wanted to be more than just friends, and the loan was a gift. She's countersuing for emotional stress. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Revels versus Clausel. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Donald Revels? Yes, Your Honor. You were suing the defendant, Sherelle Clausel? Yes, Your Honor. For $1,775 for an unpaid loan? That's correct, Your Honor. And you were countersuing, ma'am, for emotional stress and harassment in the amount of $2,000? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We'll start with you, Mr. Revels. Tell me how you know Ms. Clausel and what this case is about. In approximately January of 2012, Your Honor, I met uh, the defendant at a church fellowship. I ask her out, we begin to date and see each other almost almost um, daily. Okay, so you knew her from seeing her at church? Yes, occasionally. Okay. And what do you do at the church? I'm a minister. You're a minister? Yes. Okay. Were you in the Bible study? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I actually, I, I was the host of the Bible study, Your Honor. I was the host of the Bible study. Well, how did, you, how did you ask her out? I'm just curious. Well, based on the dynamics that were, that were taking place at the time, uh, we communicated verbally during certain sessions, during the church session. And so I just decided, you know, I just decided she was an attractive woman. I asked if she would like to go out. Okay. So in January, approximately July of 2013, the relationship turned sort of contentious. So I thought uh, I, would, I would call it off, I would break it off. Well, how long did the two of you date? I'm sorry. <laughs> God help me. How long did the two of you date, sir? On and off, totally, probably two years, give or take. Okay. And what do you have to say about this man? That is a lie, Your Honor. Okay. Um, first of all, yes, he is a minister. He is a holy hustler. I'm just letting you know that uh, right that's now. That's not true, Your Honor. Yes. That's not well, true, Your Honor. Well, I'm going to just say sir. this. He approached me in the church. I had no interest in him. And he actually approached me in the church, had no idea. I'm thinking this guy may be married or something. I've been at the church for over 10 years. And um, me being a Christian woman, come to find out he dates, he's dated more than one woman at this church. He's been married <coughs> over true, twice. Stop, stop, stop. Twice. He's been married over two times. Not only has he been married over two times, he had a potential marriage that he was going to have with someone he dated on and off at the church for over four years. Well, what's so wrong he, with meeting people at church? Well, come on, you're a minister. You're not supposed to be dating every single woman in the church and giving them the that's eye. That's not true, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's, that's the problem. That's the problem that they have nowadays in these churches. They need to be worried about trying she's to save me. us instead of trying to date us. She's trying to... <laughs> She's trying to save her bank account and keep from paying me what she's trying to keep from doing. A bank account? Okay, it's not so even that much money. Ma'am, 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 stop. Ooh, my stop. Lord. 
Your Honor, in, in approximately July of 2013, these are approximate dates, uh, the relationship turned sort of contentious, so... So the two of you weren't getting along? Like to raise a voice at me, as you can see. Oh. Well, were you dating other women in the church? Not while I was dating her, no. Okay. So, as I was about That's to say... That's not true, Your Honor. Uh, we still communicated. We were still amicable with each other. Oh. Uh, she would call me once or twice a week to borrow my drill, borrow my tent, sometimes my truck, and occasionally I would go by our house to fax uh, certain materials to use a fax machine. Your Honor, can I speak to Stop. So, no. Uh, I will give you an opportunity yes, to respond. Just okay. Relax. okay. So, but you got to calm down. Okay. So, All right. So, wait. Hold on. Hold on a second. Go back. Would you still see her in church? Uh, yes, I would see her occasionally. And that wasn't awkward for you? No, because, uh, you know, we, had, we, weren't, we were no longer continuing on with the relationship. Uh, because we weren't, I began to see someone else. Well, she took it upon herself to call this lady and tell her that I was seeing her, and that wasn't the case. That someone wasn't else true. at the church? Someone else in the church after I was seeing her. Well, and she told her that I was still seeing her at the same time, and that wasn't the case. Well, this other person became angry and severed their relationship. Coming up... So, about how many women have you dated in the church? Plaintiff Donald Revels says he loaned one of the church members' money that hasn't been paid back. Defendant Sherelle Clausel says the loan was a gift, and the plaintiff is only suing because she turned down a relationship with him. So, about how many women have you dated in the church? I'm just curious. Several. Two, maybe three. I, I, I remind you, I remind you that you're a minister, sir. Honesty. So, and you're in a court of law. So correct. that's a double whammy for oath. you. Right. Under oath. So approximately January of 2013. Um, no, I, I, I just, I was waiting for the answer to my question. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Approximately how many? In about two, maybe three. Okay. All right, okay. go ahead. So in approximately January of 2014, I had tickets to a concert, and I asked her if she wanted to go with me. Uh, again, she was communicating with me, or calling me once or twice a week. She wanted to borrow my truck, wanted to borrow my drill, or, or whatever, and we were about two minutes driving time. So uh, the other lady severed the relationship because of what she had did. And so uh, I asked her if she wanted to go to the concert with me. And so we went to the concert. As time progressed, in April of, of 2014, uh, she wanted to move from a, her grandmother's house into her own, own place. She asked me if uh, another friend of hers wouldn't loan her money or didn't loan her the money or whatever, would I be able to loan it to her? And I said, well, get with that person first and see if uh, they can do it, if they, if you see how much you can get from them, and then maybe I can loan you the balance. And you say this was a loan, not this a gift. A, <laughs> that was a loan. While he was and, okay. And, and she said... So the two of you were not dating at that time, sir? Uh, no. At the no. time you gave her... You say no. you loaned her the money. The two of you were not dating? Under oath. No. Under oath. And Minister. This... So you loaned her this money for an apartment. That's correct. Okay. All right. Let me hear from her. You okay. look like you're about to blow I'm about over to there. blow. Like, seriously. What's but going on? But the thing is, I don't have a temper, first of all. I am actually very confident. Negative. Confident. Not true. Okay, you gotta... Listen. Same rule applies to you that applied to her, okay? All right. I do not blow, Your Honor. I actually... I actually am a, over the church. I've actually... I'm a... a Forgive me. I, he got me riled well, up. Well, you wrote a bunch of notes. Go. Yeah, I wrote a bunch of notes. But however, I not only did I host for him, the pastor would not have me hosting over a hundred people at the church coming in of all of all ethnicities, Your Honor. Everyone coming in at this church, and they're trusting me to be over these people. And I have their names, their addresses, their phone, their personal information that they've given to the church. And I'm checking them in. I'm making sure that the attendance is proper. I'm calling them to check on them if, they're, if they haven't shown up. Mm -hmm. Things like that. If a person with a temper, the church would not have them over something like that. How large is this church? How many members? <sighs> he's actually... I've been there for only 10 years. He's been there longer. He should know he's a minister there. They How many him. members does the church have? On roll is approximately 3,000. It's a minimum sized church, okay. a, a medium sized church. I'm sorry. Okay. In regards to him saying that he did not date me, first of all, I'm going to go back to that situation. He said that he wasn't dating me um, in the time of July of 20, 2013. He was dating me and the young lady at the same time from the Bible study that I was hosting that he was at. Mm -hmm. And not only that, when he decided, oh, something was How do you know that? 
because she told me everything. Once we put our dates together, she and I put our dates together with everything after <laughs> December, up in January, she and I have a conversation, not during the time when he was talking to her, because I just, like, let it go with the situation where, because he was actually, over for my son, he was actually supposed to be a mentor. He's kind of stalkerish. He shows up at my door constantly when I was living at my grandma's. He constantly, I tell him, don't show up without calling me. He'll call in front of the house. <laughs> yeah, he'll call in front of the house and say, I'm here. Yeah. He said, OK, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to help you out. And then you come up with the other half of it. Because he said, I want to build a relationship with you. But I said, you know, we can't go that far because you tried to date me and the other girl at the same time. And now you're coming back to me because you feel like it didn't work out with her. I said, now, because I'm not, he was showing me what gifts for my affection. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he was doing. He was showing me gifts for my affection. And it didn't work out because well, did you I, agree? Did you agree to pay this money back to him? Uh, you're on a note. How much did he give you total? It was the 1700 that he was saying. The first part, that he, when he gave it to me, and then I couldn't come up with the other part of it. Um, he gave he, you the rest. No, he called me. I didn't even ask for it. He called me and said, go to um, the uh, MoneyGram. I wired you some money. He just called me and told me. I didn't ask for it, Yarn. So you never agreed to pay him back? No, it wasn't a, oh, you're going to. And then he told me one day, he put his arms around me. He said, well, well we're going to work some out. I want to I wanna marry you. And I was like, but the thing is, is that he's like, why don't we just go up to Vegas? Let's you go tell get her it you done. To marry he told her? the other girl that he wanted to go up to Vegas from the church. OK. Did you he wanted to go to Vegas with Did everybody. You... Did you tell her? <laughs> so you're, what you're saying is you could have been the first lady of the church. Are you the head minister? Oh, no. No, I was associate. Associate pastor? He's gone okay. now. I have a text message here where she responded to the fact that we were going to meet and talk about a payment option. I did not give her uh, $1,800. I did not shower her with anything. I helped her when she needed help by asking me to help her, which was quite frequently. Coming up, swimsuits and sex come up in court. He took me to the beach constantly. Who wouldn't want to take me to the beach if I'm wearing a bikini and you're a minister and you're not going to sleep with me? I'm just being honest. That's the only way he can get some kind of look. Plaintiff Donald Revel says he loaned his church member money and hasn't been paid back. Defendant Cheryl Clausel says she's been put through emotional stress and harassment since turning down the plaintiff's advances. Look, just, just, just give me half of it back because we're going to work out something together. That's exactly what he told me. Those were his words. He said, we'll work out something together. Just, just when you get a chance to, just give it back to me. I know you just started working. You got your kids and everything. So just, you agreed to pay him back? I didn't say anything. I did not say yes. I did not say no. But in regards to text messages, I said, look, I'll try to do what I can. Your testimony is kind of changing now because okay. prior to these text messages, yes. you, you can put your hand down, Pastor, uh, please. <laughs> Ooh, Prior to these text messages, you said clearly he was showering you with gifts, and now you're telling me that there was a discussion about you paying him back. That's when I told him the relationship wasn't going to work. I wasn't showering with her with anything. Whatever the situation is, I cannot do this anymore. You're making me very uncomfortable. You're constantly showing up at my door unannounced after I've asked you repeatedly. This was before or after he gave you the money? After. OK, so why don't you just pay him back at that point if you think he's stalking you? Well, at that time, I did not pay him back because he didn't say, I want you to pay me back. When he found out that we weren't going to have a relationship, that's when he said, I want you to pay me back. From this message, it appears that you are agreeing to work out a payment plan with him to pay him this money back. When I said OK to him, it's because he said, pay me back only half of it. He said, because I gave you the rest. And I have proof right here. When he first filed it, it says right here, gave, Your Honor. May I see that? It says, gave. What is that? What is this? That's the half of it that he gave and the other half that he wired that, he, that I told him I would try to pay him back on it. And I guess he showered me with gifts. Yes, he took me places. He took me to two concerts. He took me to the beach constantly. Who wouldn't want to take me to the beach if I'm wearing a bikini and you're a minister and you're not going to sleep with me? I'm just being honest. That's the only way he can get some kind of look. The, what you're seeing is it's the original. Correct. I know this is the original claim that you and filed in court. This is the amended where where the that, day was a, after. that was a that was okay. a an error. I amended that I loaned. <laughs> an error that you gave. Well, it says gave slash loaned. Oftentimes, when people date and they're involved in relationships, one party gives money to the other. 
And when things don't work out, things are not going well, oftentimes I get people in here, well, Your Honor, this was, I, I bought her dinner and I bought her shoes and I, this money that I gave her, and everything was a loan. She owes me for everything, every dime I've ever spent on her. And I have, to, I have to sort these things out. I think this text message just shows at some point you do ask for this money back. The question in my mind is, was that the agreement when you gave it to her or did this only come up later down the road? Four months later, you're asking her about a payment plan for the money. Four months later. No, it's, it's not that I'm just asking her verbally. I've been communicator. Communic this is your evidence that you just provided to me. Four months later, you said, when was she expected to pay you this money back? Four months the, later, there's the first text message no. I see where you're talking to her about a payment plan. No. Is oh. it because the relationship didn't Negative. work out? No, not at all. I broke the relationship off with her. You say you're a lady from the church. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you again if prior to him giving you this money, you had a discussion with him about paying him back. Was that the understanding when you received this money that you were supposed to pay him back? The understanding on the initial first 800 and something, he said if it, he said if you could get the money from the guy, he said, yeah, you can pay me back. But he said this down the line when we were sitting there talking, he was like, oh, only pay me half of it back. Did you ever say to her, don't worry about paying back any of the money? Not at all, not at all. As a matter of fact, Your Honor, is it there was we were emphatic so on lying. each wire or me, each me submitting that money to her. I'm 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 not convinced. I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced that this wasn't because I have. I hear everything you're saying, but when you come into court, it's about proof, and you have the burden of proof. But no, prior to then, I was calling her and communicating with her by way of telephone. I need evidence. I and need he evidence. Was I'm not convinced. Very upset with me for not uh, showing up to his new church, also, Your Honor. I mean, you got upset. That's with that's me. A, that's all lies. You said, well, stop, "Why don't stop, you have stop. time?" I don't. I'm I'm, I'm done talking. And now, Judge Faith rules. What's your counterclaim about? Because he was showing up in my house, I'm losing sleep. I actually couldn't go places, couldn't do things. My whole life was like, I, but, and at that point, harassing. at that point, you know what? If someone's doing that, if you think they're stalking you, and someone is doing that, then you know what you do. You just give them back the money. It's not worth keeping it wasn't money. About the Even money. though you think it's a gift, at that point, you just pay the money back to get them out of your hair and move on with your life. What bothers me is I don't have a text message after you give her this money, and there was some discussion clearly about her eventually paying you back half, and then she says later down the road, you say, don't worry about it. My issue is, if you say this was really a loan and she was supposed to be paying you back, the evidence you submit to me is four months down the road, a text message talking to her about nailing down specifics of the payment plan, only because she admits that at some point she agreed to pay you back half, sir, and you have a text message where you talk to her about a payment plan. That's the only reason why I'm ordering her to pay you back half of the money. I, I'm, I'm not convinced that this was a, a loan from the very beginning. Your counterclaim for harassment is dismissed. Judgment in this case for the plaintiff, $887.50. Yes, If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.